And I think the thing that a lot of Airbnb hosts forget about is that a lot of people do want the standards of hotels. Like you do want a good bed. You do want good Wi-Fi. You do want good sheets. You do want a comfortable pillow, even though you do want that local experience. So I think trying to bridge the two sides and creating this like middle ground where you get the comforts of a hotel, but you get the uniqueness of Airbnbs is definitely the future. And I think you guys are all on the right track as well with what you're doing. What's up, everybody? My name is Mike Shogren here with my co-host, Emmanuel Pani. We're part of a group of specialized real estate investors you've probably never heard of. We didn't start with deep pockets or wealthy families, and we don't rely on 401ks, mutual funds, or traditional real estate investing. In fact, many of us don't even own the properties that fund our freedom. If you ask the money experts out there, they'd say what we do is impossible, yet it's happening every single day. It's happening through a new niche called short-term rentals. We are Short-Term Rental Nation, and these are our secrets. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Short Term Rental Secrets Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Shogren, here with my main man and brother from another mother, Mr. Emmanuel Pani. What's up, B? What's up, man? Uh, good to see you, as always. Um, as we were talking about off air, I got a contract signed on my last unit. As my, our followers know, I've had this dream that started 10 years ago. And uh, has been has been a long time coming. So unit forty or forty signed the contract yesterday. Um, so we're in the process of now pushing that through to get it closed up, um, get it refinanced. We actually have a bank for the refinancing. Um, kind of surreal, man. You know, it's been. And I mean, you went from zero. Me. You went to, from maintenance guy to owning all forty doors. In all this forty doors, man. So it's been, has been, you know. And you and I have known each other um, since about halfway, right? Like when I when we met, I had sixteen. So um, <laughs> it's Hell been of a ride, uh, dude. Hell of a ride. Right? Yeah. So I was, I was telling our good friend Chris Crawford. I was talking to him the other day, and I'm like, look at that. This overnight. 10 years kind of success right like how people always kind of talk about it it, it happens overnight but it's, it's really like in the background it's taking a really long time um so super grateful obviously knocking on wood right we're still gonna wait for appraisal and, and everything else to happen um but i hold in my heart the opinion that as long as i just keep pushing forward the way we, we've always done we'll get to where we need to go um so just super grateful and wanted to share with our listeners because you guys have been hearing me yapping about this um, for the past year uh, since we kind of started filming the show. Um, so it's it's happening, you know, so it's. Uh, Love it, dude. I'm proud yeah. of you, man. This has been a long time coming. And again, going back to like the uh, some of the personal development shows that we've done and like the goal setting shows, this has been a goal of yours for a long time, right? Like laser yeah. focused on eventually acquiring all the units in your complex it yeah. took a long time to do it but here we are at the finish line so yeah i've had literally i've been writing this goal now i, I was looking back through my agenda um, and i have a big yellow post-it note in the office so the original time i wrote this down was uh november of 2019 so that's when i was wrapping up the acquisition of the other ones and i've been writing it out every single week every single day since then yeah almost two years right literally every single week every single week i'm like top goals of this week i'm gonna get this contract top goals of this week i'm gonna get this contract and every week you're just like oh it didn't happen and you're like okay well what can we do right 100 percent, dude i love it well so, congrats on that thanks That's man freaking awesome thanks i owe you for all all the therapy sessions over the years <laughs> A lot of phone calls, a lot of phone calls and Zoom calls. A lot of phone calls for sure. But that's why you need an accountability group and, and friends that understand what you're going through, you know? hundred percent, man. hundred percent. Well, let's, uh, let's get into today's show. Today, it's, it's a little different angle. So this is somebody that's a service provider in the industry, which, are, which I'm pretty excited about. I, we love to bring on a balance of like hosts, vendors, providers, other you know, experts in the field to try and give a holistic approach to this whole industry. So today we have Daniel Iliescu. Hopefully I got that right, Dan. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Oh, you're pretty good. 
All right. Love it. So he, he has a company called Bonsai and it's a startup that's looking to help transform the short-term rental industry for the better. And their focus is on the essentials that hosts use to run their operations. And they're targeting hosts that manage their own properties. So they're really focused on helping the smaller time operators get access to deals that, you know, folks like E and I get access to around linens, towels, all sorts of those things that you wouldn't normally have access to when you only have one or maybe two listings. So he set up this company and he's, he's gone all the way. Like we we're talking offline. He's gone all the way to India to set up shop and actually start making all of this stuff for you guys, quality products at affordable prices for folks that are just getting in the game that want those, you know, high quality items for their property. So without further ado, Daniel, welcome to the show, man. Thank you. It's been a long time coming. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So kind of walk us through like what, what triggered you to, to set up Bonsai and get into this industry? Right. So uh, I went on a family trip actually to Florida in 2018 and we stayed at two Airbnbs for the first time in my life. I had never stayed in an Airbnb. I've always been a <clears throat> hotel guy. I've liked having that comfortable mattress with the nice sheets and everything. So we finally took that leap to the Airbnb market and we were kind of disappointed in Orlando. This host just bad sheets, just flannel sheets in the middle of summer in Orlando. Uh, the mattress was like on the floor and this was a pretty expensive place too. It wasn't even that cheap. So actually we drove down from Toronto all the way to Florida. So we had a long drive back. It was about 24 hours of driving in two days. So I had a long time to think about this. And at the time I was working for a procurement company. Um, we were buying stuff for hotels that were opening up. So I've had some experience in this industry before on the hotel side. So I was thinking, how can I help these individual hosts that kind of purchase their own stuff to know exactly what they need to buy and actually be able to buy them at an affordable price? Because that the second Airbnb we stayed at was actually managed by Vacasa, which is one of the larger companies. And that was decent. They had decent linens and everything else that you normally expect from a hotel. So I said, how do we bridge the gap between these hosts that want to manage their own properties and don't have maybe the knowledge or maybe they don't have the budget to purchase hundred dollar linens um, and bridge the gap between them and those guys that do. So I spent a few months kind of scouring the world to see where I could find the best stuff at the best price, tested samples for months. And we finally narrowed down on this one factory in India. Um, they had the best linens and the best towels that I've seen for the price that we were getting them. And it's just been a ride since then. After we found that COVID hit. So it was a while until we actually hit the ground running on actually putting the order in. I didn't know where this industry was going to go, but to my amazement, actually it did a lot better than hotels during this whole pandemic. So that gave me kind of the encouragement to actually put the money down and put in our first order and finally after all that pandemic it's on the way so we should be receiving it now in early september i love awesome. that man yeah i love hearing Definitely. those stories like that that is like the true like business startup story of like i had this problem i couldn't find a solution so i'm gonna go out and make my own solution right like staying at these short-term rentals that, you know, probably mom and pop operators that didn't know what they didn't know. The experience wasn't the best. Flannel sheets in the summer in Orlando <laughs> is definitely not a wise choice. I don't know. They were, they were orange. So. Yeah. So. I don't think flannel sheets are a way to go ever, no matter where, like just not just, it should not happen. Like that shouldn't be. <laughs> that should be one of the cardinal rules of, of vacation rentals. Shouldn't just not. I had a flashback to my bedroom when I was 12. I had some flannel sheets. <laughs> and I think that's where they should have stayed, but clearly these people uh, kept using them. So, yeah. Oh, man. So what does that process look like? I mean, going, so did you fly over to India and like checked out some of these factories? No, no. So first, like? first we just started contacting people through embassies, just Googling kind of factories that do this kind of stuff. And then once we narrowed it down to the one we wanted, we, we met with them and we went over there. 
but uh, that was before COVID, luckily. Um, so that, that was that process. I, I wouldn't fly over to like nine different places around the world because I wanted to explore all the options. So we explored Turkey, China, India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, all of these major, I guess, producers of towels and sheets around the world. And honestly, for the quality and price, I think India was the most appealing to me for sure. Um, I, I spent months just testing samples because I, I didn't want to launch a company and then find out that the sheets start pilling after three washes. So that was on almost my cardinal rule. I wanted to have quality, even if let's say it costs a little more and I made a little less, I just wanted to have quality. And I know in the long run, that'll pay off, even though I may not be making 300% profits like most of these stores do that sell you the hundred dollar sheets. I thought in the long run, I'll be making enough to sustain the company, but I wanted quality for sure. Mm. So um, I kind of consulted with a few people that I knew in the industry. They told me kind of where they were buying it, what they were using, and then we went from there. So that's why we picked 300 thread counts. Maybe it's a little high. I know most people usually go in the 200s, usually for Airbnbs, but I thought quality would prevail over time just like how you buy a shirt from zara and it starts Shrinking. changing form after two washes uh i thought i'd go for that hugo boss shirt instead and know that it still comes out the same way after 20 washes so yeah oh, i love that so how how did you create so let's say we have somebody that is listening that maybe is is a host right now but mm -hmm. really has realized that maybe this is not the space for them but they would like to be involved having me kind of do a side business that is auxiliary to the industry like like you did right what does this process look like now so they the sheets come from india i assume you you live in canada still i do yeah, I'm still yeah. yeah. so they're going to come to you in canada so do you have a warehouse and then you're going to ship them from there or or how exactly so it's quite like the process actually much longer than i thought it would be but yeah <laughs> pretty much you you kind of decide what you want from india you place your order it takes about three months sometimes to get the order like done because there's quite a lot of people in front of you especially when you're not putting in a huge order like a walmart or somebody like that so you're you're kind of a little fry that they just slot in to their schedule and then it takes about a month to come by ship and then like you said you either have your own place your own warehouse a garage whatever it may be however you can start it we, we we're renting a small warehouse space so that's how we're doing it but i guess if it depends on your budget you could put in your own garage whatever you got to do to get it started right and then it just goes from there you ship it out uh through ups or canada post or usps or whatever you're using yeah i was checking out i was checking out the website before we jumped on and i'll just i'll plug that for you real quick it's uh, to bonsai so t-o bonsai b-o-n-s-a-i dot com s-a-i dot com and um, so you've got you've got bedding you've got towels and then you also have some amenities for folks like toiletries things like that so for you are there different lines or like i see you've got like a standard an air and a cloud collection of those like different levels of of quality or, or like what does that look like yeah so for example for the towels we have our own collection is the air and the cloud the standard is just like a local vendor that i partnered with just to get stuff out in the meantime before my stuff comes but the the air and the cloud so the air is a little cheaper um it does, it's not necessarily much worse than the cloud but the the air uses this new technology that they've developed some of these factories have developed so they make the loops of the yarn larger so that the towel feels fluffier when it comes out of the dryer, but it's also lighter. So for people like yourself, for example, where you have like a small hotel and you're putting in a lot of a lot of loads of laundry over time, you're consuming less, less water, less detergent, because you could put more towels in the washing machine than you would with those heavier towels. So they're fluffier, they're lighter. Um, and over time they consume less water and they dry quicker as well because they're fluffier and the loops are larger. 
so that's that was a technology that I found pretty interesting for the industry, especially when you know how important it is to kind of turn over the room as quickly as possible. So I thought the less it stays in the in the dryer, the better. So that's one of them. And then I thought that for the higher end properties, you would want a more luxurious towel and that that's the cloud collection. So it uses a finer um, long staple cotton in the towel. And it's a lot softer. It's more of something you would find at like a, a Four Seasons or something like that. So those are the two collections. Um, we were exploring a third, um, which was using actually recycled cotton as well. But for now, we've held off on that one. But that's an eco-friendly one that we will be looking at in the future. I like well. the idea of the air one, because I know for us, I ended up starting to outsource a lot of my linens and towels because it just weren't drying fast enough. When you're it's turning nightmare, over yeah. 20 rooms in a day, like <laughs> you got to move. You get from, for us, it's from 10 o'clock to three o'clock. It's a five hour window, a lot of laundry to do in, you know, five hours. Obviously we have backups and things like that. But if you want to do all that laundry in a day, we just couldn't do it because stuff would just take too long to dry. So we just started outsourcing it. But I think that's a genius technology. And um, I love that. So on, on the bedding side, Again, you've got the cloud collection for linens and you've got pillows and comforters. You've got mattresses and pillow protectors. Or is all of that sourced by you guys? No. So I decided which battles I wanted to take on yeah. myself. Um, so like I've, I've said before, the, the sheets, so the cloud collection, so the, the sheets, the duvet, the pillowcases, that's all us. And then the air and the cloud collection for the towels is us. But then I decided what what else do you need for these places? And I decided to partner with renowned and well, I, I tested the products myself just to make sure they're good. So we've partnered with a few different companies. So for example, on the mattress protector side, we have, um, we have two different mattress protectors from protect to bed, which is like one of the largest uh, mattress protector companies in Canada and the US. And there's two options. There's the bug lock, which is a full encasement. So that's pretty good for bed bugs. It keeps your mattress safe. And actually a lot of mattress companies won't allow you to use their warranty if you don't have a full encasement on the mattress. And I think a lot of people don't know that. So with the, the use that you guys get in your places, I think uh, having a full encasement is pretty important, especially you never know who comes and stays at your places and you don't want to have to change the mattress because that's a pretty big investment, especially if you buy a better one. So that's always a very cheap and good option that pretty much pays for itself over the years. So, yeah, and you never know if people spilling things. We, we always protect and, and do the full, for full protection also because those are harder for people to like take off. Mm -hmm. We have sometimes people that come and, and choose to rewash the sheets even though the beds are 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 clean some people just need need to do that and a lot of time they'll take they'll take everything off so if you don't have the one that really wraps up in it then sometimes you just get stains for no reason because you had the mattress pad on there and then they just kind of took it off um, yeah and so i it, sorry go ahead no go ahead no, no i went to this uh trade show and they showed me like they literally poured like a whole coffee on the mattress and nothing goes through it's amazing yeah yeah that's that's a long-term thing um i was going through the site and also what mike was saying on the amenities you guys have this thing called a wi-fi porter yeah but so actually i'd like to talk about that one as well it's pretty cool yeah um many individual properties can't afford to have like a pm pms system to kind of connect everything together right so these these wi-fi porters i came across uh, through uh through instagram actually i saw them and i partnered with the company and they make these really nice uh wi-fi porters made out of natural wood and they actually allow you to do way more than just connect to the internet um through just a tap of the phone they help you record people's emails. So mostly through Airbnb, you're not allowed to get the email of these people. So this actually helps you get emails for future campaigns that you want to run and all that stuff. And you also get the emails of all the other people that are staying. 
So just because I'm staying at your place, um, you're probably going to get my girlfriends as well or my two other friends that are staying with me. <clears throat> so you you widen your your net of emails that you get for future campaigns. And you could also prompt people to give you a review on your Airbnb or your Google or wherever on your website. And once you log into the email, onto the Wi-Fi, it also allows you to redirect them to your website. So maybe you have a website with more amenities that you offer, like tours, local tours or something like that, you could do that as well. So it's a pretty, pretty nifty little device. Yeah. So it almost looks like it almost works like a QR code kind of thing. So you just put your phone against it and it exactly, yeah. the Wi-Fi. Yeah. So you oh, set okay. it up yourself, um, yeah. you put in the password and everything, and then depending on what kind of phones your guests have, you could either scan the QR code or you could literally just tap your phone to the device and it automatically connects. Wow. So I is it kind of like a hotel that, that you have to log in to the network or whatever and that's how you get the names and emails? Exactly. So it's like that, but for individual hosts or even larger hosts like yourselves that have a lot of properties, you could use it as well. And it all ties into a backend system that they allow you to have and you could connect... So for example, your 40 apartments that you have that you were just talking about earlier, you could have one of these in all 40 of the apartments and then you could tie them all together on the back end to kind of manage all 40 of them. You don't have to do each one remotely, like individually. That's amazing. I didn't even know this was a thing. Like I didn't think this was... I didn't know it was a thing either until I saw an ad on Instagram and I contacted them. Like it's such a great idea for Airbnbs. So I, and now, now I'm just curious, right? Like what do you do with a computer? Like, do you tap a computer against it or? or uh, <laughs> that's a good point. I, yeah. yeah. So I, that has to be, they probably have something else or like probably the same way you gather the, the email settings. They, there is an option like that through, yeah. the, through the thing. Exactly. Um, I, I love it because I feel that you, you're coming from such a unique kind of perspective but you really have done work to understand us as an industry and like what we need and what we're looking for and, and what makes makes things better um so what's what's the vision so like what where, where do you see where do you see bonsai going and and what what is the goal like do you want to get into doing all components of the go into into vacation rentals are you going to kind of remain in this bedding bath amenities kind of space where where do you see yourself going yeah well the goal is the goal originally was to better the industry through the products but i think over time as we slowly increase our product uh, offering and are able to offer our customers more products i definitely would like to get into what you guys are doing and definitely make our own properties happen that have like their own standards and they're under this bonsai umbrella that have like a, you know, if you're staying at a bonsai property, you're always going to get these certain things. And I think the thing that makes Airbnb so special is the fact that they're so unique everywhere. They're unique. Like it's not like a Hilton where you go to a Hilton in Korea or a Hilton in Europe or a Hilton in the U S and the, all the rooms are the same. Mm-hmm. I think that's, that's the biggest downfall of hotels. They're just too bland and too, copy paste while the Airbnb industry, no matter where you go, you're getting a bit of the flavor of the local area and you're getting experiences from the local area and you might get products from the local area in your Airbnb. And I think the thing that a lot of Airbnb hosts forget about is that a lot of people do want the standards of hotels. Like you do want a good bed, you do want good Wi-Fi, you do want good sheets, you do want a comfortable pillow even though you do want that local experience. So I think trying to bridge the two sides and creating this like middle ground where you get the comforts of a hotel, but you get the uniqueness of Airbnbs is definitely the future. And I think you guys are all on the right track as well with what you're doing. 100%. Yeah. I think that's such an important thing, especially if you if you are like a smaller host and, and I made this mistake at the beginning, it was really just going for the cheapest kind of thing that I could put in it. Because as I was growing, just my 
my cash flow just wasn't there, right? So like I, I just couldn't afford to buy things in bulk, not because I didn't want to or didn't understand the economy of scale. I just didn't have the money, right? So what I would do is I would go to like oh, Target, talking about like me and Mike always talk about like the different qualities, right? Like the Target, the Walmart, right? So I would go to Target and I will find their, their going to school kind of line and I will buy everything they had, right? So I will go and I will buy all the white towels that they had. The problem with those, though, is that they're made to last probably one school year. And the way that we were washing them is they would last maybe three months, three to four months. So I remember the difference that he made in our quality the moment that I was able to put some money aside and do submit that big, I think it was like a nine or $10,000 order that I did all the towels and all the sheets. And, and But when I did that, the quality and the complaints went away because I remember a lot of people at the beginning were like complaining that it was like the towels are crunchy or the towels are not like no soft and there was nothing we could do like it does, didn't matter if we put softener in it no matter what happened there was just the quality of the towel wasn't there um I would love to ask you something because I think a lot of the people and I heard this conversation when we were on clubhouse one time is why why do hospitality, especially the Hiltons and stuff like that, why choose a towel that has cotton in it versus, because a lot of people are like, oh, there is this other towels that have like polyester and they're like half and half blend. But I know that all the hosts that I've dealt with that do this at a high level and anybody that is in hospitality, we all swear by, by cotton. Honestly, it's a preference. Um, polyester does have its benefits sometimes, um, for sure. Not 50-50, I would say that's going too far. But mm. maybe like a 20-80 split is okay. Um, usually polyester doesn't wrinkle as much. So for hotels, for example, they have huge laundry rooms with these huge machines that kind of iron everything and make them all nice. So they don't really care about wrinkling, right? So I think a lot of a lot of hosts go polyester as well for that fact. They also think that polyester lasts longer, which doesn't always, it isn't always the case. If you have a good cotton sheet, it'll last almost as long as a polyester mix, but cotton feels nicer. So for example, on our cotton sheets, we have a sateen weave. So the sateen weave is that weave that makes them feel almost silky and smooth rather than a little rough. Usually the polyester ones always feel a little rough. Um, when they come out of the dryer, especially they feel super rough while the, the cotton ones are always softer. So hotels, high-end hotels, especially that's why they always have hundred percent cotton. It's because it's softer and smoother and that's kind of associated with luxury rather than a rough material. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe that's not the answer you were looking for. But. No, that's actually, that's what I, what I thought. But I think people ask me all the time, like we're onboarding this property for clients right now. And they were asking me that question. They're like, which towel should we use? And I'm the, I, my personal preference is hundred percent cotton. And there's towels and towels. So for example, at my factory, the, the eco one that I was getting, which I didn't end up getting, they warned me, they said, are you selling these to hotels? And I said, not particularly and they said okay good because even different the same quality towel the way it's woven can last longer in like so that's why the walmart ones don't last long because they're made for consumption to people that are just washing their hands maybe once twice a day with it right in the morning and at night you're not using it all day and you're not washing it every day pretty much like you do in a hotel mm -hmm. so hotel towels are just woven in different ways they're using different kind of weaving techniques and in the cotton itself um so that's why they're made to last long and our two collections that we have are like hotel grade towels so they'll last longer and same with uh, actually another myth in the in the realm of thread count for example for sheets if you ever go to a store and you see a thousand thread count, unless that thousand thread count sheet is a thousand dollars, it's actually not a thousand thread count. So in the industry, 
it, it's almost like back in the day when all the cars just wanted to be a V8, a V10, a V12, and just, the engines were just getting bigger and bigger. And they realized a, a four cylinder is good enough if, as long as it has a turbo. It's the same thing with sheets. Um, so R300 is actually 300 thread count. So a lot of stores, you'll see 600 thread count, but it's actually just as thick and woven as ours. The way they do it is they weave two thin threads together into one, and then that's already two threads. And then, so 600 is really 300. 1,000 is really 500 or less. So that's, that's a real big myth in the industry. A lot of people just get wowed by the 1,800, 700 thread count, while those ones might actually be lesser quality than a, a good 250 or good 300. That's funny. Those are things like I love picturing how... like those braided lines. They probably fray after a few washes. Exactly, and that's what happens. Thread counts. Yeah. yeah, and that's so fascinating to me because I think, it, and and that's why it's so good for us to have other people that are in the industry, right? Because like you go, and if you're a one to two unit host, most likely the way that you're going about furnishing your places is going to Home Goods and Ross and all these places, and they are notorious for having all these different kind of tread counts and you may be swayed into paying a little bit more because they say 800 and now you know which i had no idea um now you know that's not even a thing like that's that's it doesn't even work so literally you're better off buying a name brand that has a lower thread count rather than this unknown brands that say oh it's a thousand it's egyptian this or it's this and this and in reality they're all it's all marketing well mike probably knows right i have a super technical question yeah on this um what is like microfiber when it comes to linens like i love the linens that i got but they're this microfiber but the problem is is they i don't care what i do they come out like super wrinkled all the time as opposed to some other type of material versus you know, cotton, polyester, whatever. I don't, I don't know the technicalities of it. And I, you've done a lot of research on it. So. I don't pretend to be an expert, so I'll, I'll tell you what I know, but uh, for example, the wrinkling, non-wrinkle is not always good. The reason I didn't want to put the non-wrinkling is because the way they get non-wrinkling is they put all these chemicals into the sheets after they're done and they put them through these harsh chemicals to get the the non-wrinkling and that non-wrinkling after maybe 10 15 washes goes away anyway so you're you're just getting non-wrinkle for maybe 15 20 washes max and then you're back to the wrinkles and you've also exposed all these people to these chemicals in the sheets the what I'd recommend if you don't want to stay there and iron your sheets, it's to take them out of the dryer right away and to lay them on the bed. And you probably won't get much wrinkling that way. If you take them out of the dryer or you leave them in the dryer for like another half hour after it's done and you take them out and then you just pile them on the bed and you leave them there for another half hour while you're vacuuming around the house, then for sure you're going to get some wrinkling. Because hotels, like I said, these large hotels have these huge like machines that kind of take the, they take the sheet through it and it kind of irons it right away and it comes out folded on the other side. So they don't have this problem, but I need one of those on a loaner. (laughs) (laughs) Those are those machines that like, I looked into like commercial laundry machines because like having this problem and they're. I was going to, it was going to cost me no $30,000 for one set. Yeah. And I had no idea. Like, I'm like, okay, like a good machine is a thousand. Maybe I'll spend like five to six. And I'm the, then I started looking, you're like 15 a piece. And I was like 15 a piece. I'm like, are you guys crazy? Like, I'm like, what does it come out already? Like done and folded. And that's like the machine goes and puts it on the bed. I was like, what's like, why am I paying this much money? But it's true, right? Like that's, that's the difference in, in the quality of of how you do it and like i i'm a psychopath so i used to make i had a, a a lady that came and her exclusive job was to iron iron things and then she left and we can't even find her anymore she doesn't even answer the phone anymore 
I think she's you done ironing for the rest saying. of her life. She's like, she's like, I am never going back to those people. They're psychopaths. I was like, iron the, the like I would make her iron like the pillowcases and everything else. But because I, I too, like you, Daniel, I love hotels and I love sleeping in hotels. And to me, that is the main, if I, if I would tell somebody, I'm like, you don't have a lot of money. Where do you put the money that you do have? It's in the mattresses, the towels and the sheets. Because ultimately, I'd say like, bed is number one for sure. Yeah, I agree. Most people go to city and they stay in the room for maybe eight nine hours, and eight of those hours are them sleeping. So especially when you're going to somewhere like Paris or Rome and you're on the streets all day, not only are you tired, you want a nice bed to sleep in. Yeah. So I think number one, you got to invest in your bed, followed by the bathroom, like you you just said, com- like the amenities or the towels or whatever you have in the bathroom. Yeah. But bed, I I'd, I'd always say is number one because that's where you're sleeping. If if you have if you're there for a conference and you can't sleep because the the sheets are itchy and the pillows too hard and all that stuff, then you're not gonna be performing the next day and you're for sure getting a three star review when yeah. they're leaving. So that's no, why that's I, I always recommend putting four pillows too hard, too soft because you never know what kind of pillow those uh, those people are gonna like. So that's exactly that's great advice too for our our latest the twenty unit where it was. It's nothing, I always said it's nothing fancy, but the theme was clean, comfortable, and affordable. So that's what we did. We just focused on getting really good linens, really good towels, nice pillows, but a blend, two more firm and two really soft. And um, just because again, like if you're looking for a place to stay, I don't care how nice it is. If the bed sucks and you don't sleep good, just like Daniel said, you're not going to be happy. So like, don't, those are like some bare bones things. And I'll spend a little bit more on the towels just to make sure they're nice, soft, fluffy towels, because I know like it just, it just feels more upscale. It feels like you care, you know, Mm -hmm. and then you piggyback that with the toiletry kits and everything else that you put out. It just, they can take a baseline property and just give it that little extra. Yeah. And I think if you have the bare minimum everywhere else, it would, make up for the difference so if you have a pretty bare to the bone kind of property but you kind of splurge on on the bedding and and the towels i think people would lean towards being more happy rather than less happy even if the property wasn't as well equipped so again and i think that's that's such a big question that i keep asking everybody in this last couple podcasts is like if you have a limited budget where do you put it and i and i love what daniel said i think going to the bed bedding towels it's it's some of the best higher rate of return that you're going to ever have it's going to be on those things and i know because i didn't do that for a very long time just on trying to make it unique and local and offering your customers a local experience is always a great idea too so for example we've partnered i haven't put it on my website yet but we've partnered with a local company that does all their soaps and shampoos and everything all natural um they make everything by hand in the city that they're at out here in Ontario. And you could always contact your local soap or shampoo shop and ask for a discount on their products if you buy them in bulk. And for example, this lady, she gets these cards out and she puts them, she gives them to you to put them in the bathroom. And your guests, if they like the products, can get like 10 or 15% discount at her shop if they go there. So there's always ways to kind of mingle with the local economy and kind of boost other places as well for sure yeah 100 percent. i love that when we were in dallas for a while we did that with the local coffee company um the local coffee shop and guests would get you know little discounts and things like that but it just brings in that like that local flair too so um i want to be respectful of your time i know we're getting near the end of our time here before we get into the last question um first i want to acknowledge you for your courage to start this whole thing. Cause this isn't just like setting up some little online business. Like this is legit. Like you went out, you put in the work, found a manufacturing facility on the other side of the world to provide a good product for this industry. So I want to acknowledge you for that. That is no small feat. So thank you. And uh, we wish you all the best with that. And then for the listeners, where can they learn more about you and bonsai and share all those links so people can learn more about you guys. 
Well, like you said, you could go to tobonsai.com, uh, T-O-B-O-N-S-A-I.com. Um, there's more information there. And if they want, they could always give us a call. I'll probably answer the phone. I could talk to them a little more as well. Like I said, most of my stuff, like the reason I went into this was so that you didn't have to buy 12 sets of bedding if you only have one bed. So we do put our pricing for per set on our website. But for sure, if there's anybody that has like 20 units or 30 units or whatever, and they want to get in contact with us, we could definitely offer them a better price than we have on our website. So I would definitely recommend those people to give us a call and we'll chat with them and see what we could do for them and give them a good offer. Awesome. Well, again, thank you. I appreciate that. And uh, the last question that we ask all of our guests is, what is your number one secret to success with short-term rentals? Uh, number one secret. I don't know. God lives in the details, maybe. God lives in the details. Okay, <laughs> I like that. Expand I on that for that. a second. Uh, if I feel like if you respect your customers and you respect their ability to see that it's quality, then they will appreciate you for doing all that work for them. And they'll always be grateful and they'll become long-term customers of yours. So if you, if you don't think that your customer has the knowledge or the, if you don't think, if you don't have any respect for your customer, then you're just going to give them a shitty product. And in the end, you're going to end up going bankrupt because nobody's going to like your products after they find out it starts falling apart after a few washes. So I think if you respect your customer and you offer them a good product at a good price, and that's how you kind of create a franchise and go from there. Mm. I love it, man. That was, that was excellent. And, and like, it's completely in my wheelhouse. So I, I super appreciate that. And, and it's, a, it's a huge learning lesson for all of our seasoned landlord that are looking into SDRs just because they're become very popular and we help with the cash flow so they make more money but they're coming very much from that i'll do the bare minimum to get the property up and running and as our good friend mark simpson says once you let somebody into your house and they put their head on your your bed you're in hospitality so that game completely changes and i think having respect for others especially when you don't necessarily think that they're going to see it it goes a long way and then you never know who who your guest is right like i've had people that you wouldn't think but they were executive or owned hotels and so they they understand and they appreciate it and they recognize it and they'll choose your stuff because they recognize the effort very much like what you were saying over choosing somewhere else where they don't feel the effort is actually there and that's the thing right you want to create return customers all the time for yourselves right because people always come back to the same cities and maybe they want to try somewhere new but if you've made such a huge impact on them and they love your place they're going to come back and they're going to tell their friends to come back to your place too yeah 100%. well said i just noticed you have the hoodie with the logo and everything I <laughs> very very subtle well really i don't have the background with my logo because it was too dark so i had to put on the sweater with the logo <laughs> I love it. Well, love Daniel, it. thank you so much for being with us. Really appreciate you. Thank you. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for the opportunity. Yeah, Absolutely. Great. Take Have care, everybody. Day. Have a good bye. Day. Bye. Ciao. Hey, STR Nation, if you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and leave us a review. And in the comments, let us know what topics you want us to cover on upcoming episodes, and we'll make sure to get that in the books for you. And if you really want to learn how to launch, automate, and scale your short-term rental business, if you want to go deeper, then check out our free masterclass at strsecrets.com.